Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, you probably, if you follow me for a while, you probably know that I uh, spent way too much time on Twitter or X, uh, that's what it costs now. And uh, so, that I'm going to do this new uh, series, uh, basically going through, it's actually not new, I've done it before, but no, just going through some of the things that I post and reply and everything. And I think that uh, it does help to uh, share a lot of my views which I may not be able to share uh, in a normal setting, like normal video or... Because there is just way too much things happening around the world and uh, it's also a good way to keep track of all the, all the latest breaking news uh, around the world. And I think that this would be something that is uh, easy to do for me, but it's also probably insightful for some of you guys. And uh, so uh, we're going to go through uh, some of the, maybe the past... 12 to 24 hours of things uh, so i got to scroll down and uh, yeah to maybe 11 uh, so not go too far and there's a lot of things that have happened so we can go through a bit so this is okay so maybe above yeah so okay let's go through uh, from this way all the way up uh, Max Montero is a uh, uh, Filipino so so the she so he Basically, it's a Max Defense Philippines. Max Defense Philippines is a huge, very, very big uh, uh, military channel from Philippines. They focus mostly on the Filipino stuff. And uh, so this, uh, but, you know, uh, very, uh, very, 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 very big uh, on Facebook, uh, but not that big on Twitter. So he said that, uh, as he said before, uh, China is only friendly and respectful of territories and entitlements of its neighbors that is gain friends and support from that instead of entering into collective security partnership with the US. Too much greed brought China all to itself. So the problem with China is that they don't. They, in, instead of making a very big uh, strategic uh, uh, decision to not forcefully claim the South China Sea, uh, they, they decided to do that instead. They, if they did not try to forcefully take to the South China Sea and they actually decided to make friends and uh, try to you know, create this uh, new uh, friendship and uh, probably even alliance against the United States, they would easily, I can tell you 100% easily, gather the support of all of Southeast Asia to be on their side against the United States easily but the problem problem comes when there was already conflicting claims in south china sea between the southeast asian states between malaysia brunei philippines vietnam and suddenly china also throw themselves into the mix and taiwan is actually also inside the mix of the claimant state they are one of the claimant states uh, within the south china sea because uh taiwan is republic of china and their map is drawn by the Republic of China. The, the People's Republic of China, the current China, the map that they use to draw the nine dash line is actually based off the Republic of China, Taiwan's mapping, which is an 11 dash line. So, uh, so the China could really no need that South China Sea. The, the re, in reality is that they are a huge country. They don't really need that. If they have the friends and support and alliance of the South Southeast Asian countries, they don't really need it uh, to have military base in South China Sea. The, it, is more, it, it, comes, it comes out more from a very defensive point of uh, position uh, of the view of the world. Uh, and that actually brought uh, China into the current situation where they could have won all the support. Like seriously, uh, Singapore Singapore started to support and uh, taught China how to open up this economy and uh, China eventually grew and become such a powerful state. A lot to do with Singapore because basically they learned everything from Singapore. And, and Singapore's position was that if China was strong, then we will have a big superpower that is near to us that we can trust uh, to help to counter this influence from the United States, from the West. However, China decided to take the South China Sea and it's, it just threw everything into chaos. And it's really a big mistake, as well as I wrote, uh, in my opinion. So uh, the Chinese Asia a reporter reported uh, that the Myanmar's airbase has been hit in Nipido. Nipido is actually the capital of Myanmar by some free flight uh, rockets. So basically some kind of uh, MRRS attack. And uh, this is the second attack, uh, the first one being drones. I don't have much to talk about this. Uh, but the, 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 rebel, the rebel forces in Myanmar is uh, growing. 
uh, the the military operation is actually growing, and um, and the the Myanmar junta, the military has a uh, forced in conscription. So because they are running low on manpower, nobody would sign up to die. So they now forced in conscriptions, and uh, let's see how how they will act or would it become a, a place where they create trojan horses uh to allow uh to allow the rebels to actually get trained by the military and then immediately revolt against them so that could be a possibility so and uh so another post by nexta um shows a uh, migrants storming the polish border and in fact they are very well prepared they have um ladders to try to scale the fencing so and then the polish Polish security forces uh, actually tried to stop them. So this is uh, ongoing again. Uh, so I posted my video uh, regarding the, the game of chicken between Israel and Iran. Uh, yeah, really I put out a few, you know, I think it's decent and good videos. However, no, nobody watches. Uh, very few people watch, only a few thousand. So, you know, that, that's, that's my life now. <laughs> so, okay, so this is the next one. So this Jugan... Uh, Nordic, uh, who is this guy? This is a this is a NAFO guy. So, uh, managing director of franchise franchise international education company. So he's just a civilian. So he's very interested in geopolitics. It seems, and he said that uh, the the British intelligence reported that the Russians are going to conscript four hundred more four hundred thousand more soldiers by the end of twenty twenty four. So uh, he's very angry that Europe is still repairing kindergartens and are building new roads and then can become slave and give. And all they can actually give Ukraine and all the weapons they want to win the war. Uh, my response is that they can also give all the weapons to Ukraine and then become Ukrainian slave. Of course, you know, Ukrainian slave can be, you know, it can be all, it can be a, way, a lot of ways to look at it. It can be slave to Ukraine by the way by way of a bit more ridiculous. Ukraine used the military the, the weapons to enchant and then you know attack westward. Another possibility is you give the weapons all to Ukraine. Ukraine have the victory against Russia, but now Ukraine is now the most powerful military country in Europe, in EU and in NATO, uh, minus United States. And then they will continue to blackmail you uh Europe into giving them more money, uh more resources to rebuild the country and build Ukraine into something very, very powerful. Ukraine is potentially a very powerful country and it is a very powerful country before the war. So uh, despite all the corruption and whatnot, Ukraine is very powerful. Militarily, they could have conquered the entire of Eastern Europe all, all on their own. So uh, which is why, you know, Ukraine have to be destroyed in the view of the West by NATO, by United States. And uh, they are in the process of using Ukraine to fight Russia so that both tr possible threats can be destroyed at the same time. So uh, the Europe really need to think carefully, you know, Ukraine Ukraine is not in NATO. No, this is a different thing altogether. So, so, uh, and um, so there is this news uh, by uh, Sprinter Factory. Uh, so the French pres president uh, supposedly sending the 126th Infantry Regiment uh, that fought in the uh, Africa and Afghanistan to Odessa. So this reported by Le Monde. Uh, then they say that uh, they will be positioned, uh, currently stationed in uh, Privle Gilad. Gilad. And uh, they're going to be positioned in Odessa. So th this unit is uh, formed, uh, participated in all the colonial wars. And uh, they also uh, invaded F Russia as part of the Le Napoleon's army. Very interesting. So I just put a no. <laughs> because I also not sure, you know. Uh, yeah, because it's just rumors. So, uh, so Russia always loses war, and uh, the Putin slave have no chance against the Ukrainians. And then uh, Troy Stoy say that you no, know, Russia is now the largest country in the world because it always loses war. Hmm. So Russia loses upwards. Very interesting. Uh, South Korea hit to the polls. Um, and then uh, the opposition uh, seems to have won 100, 188 out of uh, 300 votes. So uh, some so some change is coming uh, in South Korea. So uh, this is the Philippines had learned something that you know, some people just don't seem to get it. You're not going to restrain your way into a non-confrontational relationship with a powerful China. And uh, this is correct. You, uh, in the kind of, in the current situation, as I mentioned just earlier about the China, you know, uh, 
claiming South China Sea and militarily forcefully takes it. And the users are all sort of ways, including uh, militia fishermen, which is they are not really fishing, but for real, they are, they are just you know, militias. They are actually military units. And then um, coast guards to stake their claims. And, and yes, China expects Philippines to have restraint. But because that is because based based on the Chinese view, those are Chinese sea, and they expect Philippines to respect China's sovereignty. Whereas on the Philippines, is exactly the same. Philippines expected China to respect Philippines' sovereignty. So there is actually no restraint that can be done because both have entirely conflicting claims. So, so as I said, you no, know, the only restraint expected from Philippines from China of Philippines from China is to give up all the South China Sea islands. So this is the only thing that uh, China wants and there is no other negotiation. There is no way there is a solution to this problem. So yeah, so that's that. So uh, then there is this uh, breaking news. Uh, this is, this is I think, Marcos, uh, the president of uh, Philippines. He's horrified by the so-called gentleman's agreement uh, between Duterte, the previous president, and China. So according to the to this uh, to this report, uh, it was said is the Marcos government said that the there is agreement that Duterte and China uh have made uh some secret agreements that that basically cedes territory, you no know, cedes Philippines territory to China, which is actually not the case. He uh, he said that he's horrified by the idea that they have compromised through secret agreements of the territory sovereignty and the sovereign rights of Philippines. And uh, whatever, uh, and, uh, and uh, he talks a lot of other stuff, but this is not true. Uh, this is not true because uh, I have been following the situation then. Uh, this is this is purely a political statement. They have this directed internally, mostly. So Duterte during his uh, presidency has been super public about uh, his intention to go neutral to pivot away from United States and start talking to Russia, talking to China, and try to get more, you know, out of these relationships. It's try to be, you know, see what China can do for uh, Philippines and uh, to see whether they can, you know, find common grounds. And and the aim was to avoid talking about South China Sea much, that much. Uh, Duterte's position was, also, was the same as the current government those islands are Filipinos and Duterte actually embarked on the militarization of the Philippines. They re, uh, he actually started the process of revamping and uh, refurbishing and modernizing the Philippine military. And which is what this current Marcos has inherited from Duterte's time. So, you know, this is pure politics, uh, very, very uh, hypocritical. I don't like this kind of thing. So, uh, but the kind of statements means that uh, we are also looking at Philippines going towards the direction of what Ukraine have done, trying to go into a war where they cannot win because the current president is very, very bullish and um, he's purely you no know, uh, expecting the United States to back them in a war against China. But all, but you guys you know in the DPA army probably already know the uh, United States will just you know uh, fight China to the last Filipino. So, um, and uh, so to occupy Western Europe, so this AI candy uh, thing that uh, occupy Western Euro uh, Europe, Russia will need millions of troops. That will be total war. It's not possible, which is I agree, it's not possible. So Singapore have uh, declared full operational capability of its uh, helicopter, the H225M, and uh, also the Chinook, the new version of Chinook, the CH47F. So I have. Uh, so if you have followed uh, the stream on DPA or at the Singapore Air Show, you probably have saw these two uh, helicopters. So, uh, Ju Julian, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Ropiki. Uh, Julian Ropiki, uh, some, some call him uh, some terrorist name. So basically, he says that uh, the... Ground forces statics has moved to Stalin's uh, 1943 and then the Air Force moved towards a uh, Western precision standard. So, and then he says that the Eastern, uh, U Ukrainian Eastern Air Defense is completely gone. And uh, this is weird uh, because this, <laughs> I, I joked about this is actually Ukrainian propaganda, uh, but this is a reality to the point where I know one of these pro-Ukrainian, uh, he's a bit more objective, but he's still very pro-Ukrainian, pro have to accept. And I have to talk about this for months. So, 
uh, I have because as you report the same on a daily basis, you will witness you no know, things happening, and uh, it's easy to to, to start to realize that something is unusual. You no, know, something suddenly there's a lot more airstrikes happening, and uh, this Russian uh, dominance in uh, air superiority as well as the incessant uh, bombings is not a surprise, as it had been happening for some time. So, uh, and then uh, China released uh, footages, uh, not footages, or photos of their damage of their ships. Basically, there is two holes over here, and uh, these two holes. So these two holes is because they they got ramped or they ramped the Filipino patrol boat Sinda and uh, Sindagan in the South China Sea. So it basically it was this uh metallic pole and thing. So, uh. So yeah, so our uh, so this is a Chinese Coast Guard ship. They 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 have a collision in South China Sea. So I I just joke, you know, that if they stuck to the Chinese coast, which is the Coast Guard stuck to the Chinese coast, this will not happen. Um yeah, this is gonna trigger a lot of China China supporters. So and uh so this uh NAFO guy basically says that Ukraine has is running close to its end of supplies of surface to air missiles and uh, russia is dropping more and more bombs launching more and more drones than ever before so he said that if you choose to be offended by something today no he begged you to be offended by that and uh, i'm offended you know because i'm offended by by them taking so long to realize this is happening i already was offended by this a very very long time ago uh, so and I, I said about this a long time ago and uh, people think that I'm very pro-Russia uh, just by claiming the reality that I, I said for a long time ago that the surface to air missile system seems to be missing or too little and and the Russian airstrike was getting more and more so this is exactly what had happened so no yeah so this again these are two helicopters there was this uh, in inaugural uh, ceremony the full operational capability milestone so it's a big thing um, so uh then there we have this uh weak moment uh japan basically the the prime minister of japan went to pay his respect to the war dead for of the americans and um uh, basically it's the ultimate sign of subordination because they were enemies during world war ii and basically um uh, him paying the respect to the country that actually killed off so many of their people and also dropping atomic bomb. Yeah, this is a sign of subordination. And of course, this is posted by the Chinese uh, in Weibo. Weibo is a Chinese social media. So this is, of course, partly propaganda, but it is also reality. And um, so Japan lost the war. So you know, this is a subordinate. Uh, they are subordinate, subordinate to the United States. So it is what it is. Uh, the uh, the Verkhovna brother have uh, adopted a new bill, or, or sorry, re adopted the bill of tightening of mobilization. So, so now there is no longer demobilization de after the de 36 months. That means uh, it is now similar to the Russian's mobilization. In Russia's mobilization, once you're mobilized, there is no demobilization until the end of the war. So now we are seeing the same thing being applied in Ukraine. So, uh, for those that do not know that the the troops that was mobilized, there was actually no clause saying that when they can demob demobilize. So uh, the, for the Russian one, so I think Ukrainian one is just realizing that they need the manpower. They cannot allow people to run away, and uh, they probably ran, ran away because after thirty six months, that's one and a half year. No, three years. So that's three years. So the people are about to leave the force. Those that survived for two years, they are about. They're thinking that I finally survived and I able to leave. They're now not allowed to leave. So uh, then we have the this, which I don't think I want to go through. Uh, because this is a this a um yeah, we can just read. Uh this is this guy saying that uh the the rights to uh, the the human rights in Brazil is all gone and uh Twitter is the only one that still have uh, freedom of speech because of the judicial uh thing. You can watch my Brazil video about this thing, uh, but no, yeah, I think a lot of people don't really care until you know shit hits, uh, shit hits the fan. So it is what it is. Yeah. So we move on. So yeah, then uh, IDF conducted some strikes uh, on the outskirts of a uh, Nuzerat, Nuzerat. Uh, so yeah, that's not important. Uh, again, this is the operational uh, 
this is my defense minister. So they, this is the helicopter. It, it can carry our stuff. And then our air crew. And then the defense minister. This is the defense minister. He also went on the helicopter for a ride. And then they inaugurate the thing. So yeah, happy times in Singapore Air Force. So uh, so this uh, by random and casual one uh, basically say that uh, both Japan and uh, Germany has been occupied by the United States and they were vessel states and subordinate to the US Empire which I did mention the same thing so so uh, US is occupying and building up in Poland uh, so which is an interesting thing because Poland didn't lose the war to United States uh, so uh, open source Intel uh, wrote this analysis he said that uh, he said the threat against Israel from the from Iran as a beneficial thing so I, I can sum up the whole thing. Basically, he's saying that uh, uh, Israel is losing the support from the United States because of their actions in Gaza. However, with Iran and Israel uh, firing up, United States see Iran as a enemy, as a rival. And this conflict between Iran and Israel, if happened, United States will automatically went, go to support Israel. Which then get get which means that the US, Israel will get back the support from the United States despite whatever they are doing in Gaza, so that is the what he's saying uh, in, and I actually agree. So very interesting. Like I said, geopolitics, you no, know, you you can't predict things. Then of course the frontline changes report, and then so. Uh, the European Parliament uh, did a funny thing. They said that they will not sign the council budget until the E. The European Council supports Ukraine with additional Patriot anti-missile systems, which I I uh, which I retweeted. But EU don't really own Patriots; only countries own Patriot. So I'm not sure what they can they achieve. Uh, by this guy, uh, for home start, <laughs> for home start. I don't know how to uh, for off start. Uh, yeah. So so basically, he is a very virtual signaling uh, kind of thing. I don't think. EU have real power. Uh, the I mean the European Parliament don't have real power. The they are demanding things that they don't actually possess. So they have to fight this in their own government, their own parliament, in their own country. If their own country willing to give up more patriots, then you have more patriots. Because it's not up to the European uh, Council or the European Parliament to decide. So, yep, this is a retweet. Of the same thing so they just suspended the process for approval of the european council's budget so they basically can just go on holidays uh, have their cocktails and they have their nice buffets and do nothing they don't have to do their job anymore so uh taiwan taiwan relationship act you no know, 45 years anniversary and then uh so one so basically act whoa, whoa 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 okay so not gonna play it so basically they kind of celebrated uh, this uh, 45 years, but this is a kind of a weird thing to celebrate because Taiwan or the Republic of China is betrayed by the United States when the United States decided to recognize the People's Republic of China over Republic of China. So, yeah, so I, I, I see this as a very weird thing to celebrate. So, so this, um, this, Nafo guy say that he will never forgive the uh, president of the United States to create an illusion of willingness to help Ukraine to win without ever intending to do so. And this is something they have wrote before the, even the war has started. Uh, this, this, I wrote this when uh, the Ukraine war has not started but uh, Russia has actually entered into Donbass and basically I wrote one of the titles uh, within the article as NATO preparing popcorns. So I say that all this will happen without NATO doing anything. Any form of military aid will dot 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 will likely to limit to supplies and weaponry to try to counter what the Russians are will be deploying. I doubt there will be boots on the ground. And so far, I am correct. So so this is road before the war. It's two years plus, you no know, two 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 years plus uh, ago. And uh, so far I am right because there is no reasons why NATO will want to protect Ukraine. The, the whole point is to weaken Russia. So the reality is this, and I wrote, if NATO will not come to the aid of U Ukraine today, then NATO will never accept Ukraine into its alliance as long as status quo remains. So, yeah, the 
as long as Russia will co continues to you know, be in presence in Ukraine and Ukraine is not winning, NATO will also will not accept it into NATO. So it is just a, a self-fulfilling problem. So yeah, as I mentioned, again, uh, people call me pro-Russia for telling the truth. So yeah, Kharkiv, Kiev, it could be Warsaw, Sinki, Helsinki, so basically this this was the Russians uh, missile strike in retaliation against a uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, drone strike on Russian energy facilities but this this statement uh, is weird because he was complaining that uh, that bombing is now in uh, Ukraine next time it could be in NATO countries but then the logic was that joining NATO will guarantee you security so uh, so why worry there is no reason to worry right because guaranteed no security is guaranteed so scroll up more um so this is the largest energy company in uh ukraine centrinego uh say that 100 percent of his energy capacity has been destroyed following the recent strikes so he asked advice from united states how to fight that with no air defense no ammunition and not hitting russia back and my question is why why do you need to ask advice from United States that's a little bit weird because Ukraine is under attack not United States and Ukraine can do whatever they want uh, they have total freedom in diplomacy right 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 <laughs> so if the war is, cannot be continued uh, and then the aids are not coming then no fine alternative isn't it so you know blaming United States is weird it's like so imagine sanction work on Russia. Okay, so we have this sanction on Russia, right? But by EU and the NATO countries. And then Russia complained after India and China do not want to buy energy, oil, or gas from Russia. And then uh Russia start to lose the war because they have no money. And then and then the pro-Russia supporters write, any advice from China and India how to fight uh with with without someone buying Russian oil and gas? It, it don't make sense. It's nothing to do with Russia, uh, nothing to do with India and China. So it's nothing to do with the United States. So yeah, this is kind of uh, unusual. So let's move on. Uh, so so Aiden uh, wrote about you know, uh, the Ukrainian side, the pro-Ukrainian side asking for seven new patriots. My problem is that it's not enough. Ukraine need 50 at least. because And, and with 50, maybe they can last them for two years. And max so yeah so there's not enough and then uh so uh yeah we, we're gonna skip that because it's all about patriot systems then we're gonna move on so uh there is this rumor there's this rumor about is uh israel israel and indonesia is gonna uh establish full diplomatic relationship clearly when you hear that you will know that that's impossible it doesn't make sense because the Gaza war is still ongoing. So, and the, the Indonesian foreign ministry denied the report. They said there is no plan to open diplomatic relationship with Israel, especially con considering Israel's ongoing atrocities in Gaza. So, as I mentioned, this is, um, this is obviously, you know, cannot be right. And yeah, and then we, ha we have this drone covered in a fan uh, metal cover, metal mesh and it now becomes a flying saucer <laughs> it now becomes a flying saucer it's actually quite cool so now the this the the this drone can now be used for ramming other drones but i don't think it flies very fast because uh, this fan uh, this no metal structure is actually rather heavy so we have this i cannot play the music so this this is a uh, the Karani uh fighters these are this, this is one of the rebel groups uh in in uh, Myanmar, so the Karen group in the Karen state. So this is this is their military uniform is very distinctive. The colors are very dis distinctive. They are very organized, and uh, they are basically dancing on a uh, with a Thai very very famous Thai popular uh, music. And then uh, it's actually a very cool video. And uh, I think the focus is all on that pretty girl in the center, uh, because that's the only face that you can really see very very clearly. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to see young people very happy. So. And then, um, so then we have Russia uh, putting a statement in United Nations. 
basically saying that very soon the only topic in the international meetings on Ukraine will be the unconditional surrender of Ukraine. Basically, basically Ukraine, Russia is now putting out the word saying that the end is nigh. So very, very interesting uh, warning from the Russian uh, side in the United Nations. And then we have uh, this Sergei guy um, writing the map, uh, uh, sharing this map of all the missiles. So the three strikes, the three yellow ones are Kinzals. And then you have uh, other cruise missiles. These are the red ones are cruise missiles. The, I think the blue one, uh, the, the sorry, the cyan one is actually drones. So Shahid drones. So basically, yeah, he's complaining, you know, just give the Ukrainian patriots, you know, because now uh, Europe, uh, no, EU, uh, Ukraine have lost so much of its energy, you know, stuff, their gas, uh, gas facility and whatnot. Uh, but it is a retaliation. Ukraine strike Russia's energy facility. So Russia strikes back in a, you know, a tooth for a tooth kind of situation. So, and honestly, putting the Patriots will not make any difference. If you look at how the, the, the missiles able to swerve around, even the drones can swerve around, they have, they can navigate in a different way uh, around places where there is surface-to-air missile system. Having Patriots doesn't really make a lot of difference. And the Patriots themselves, once detected, they will be hit by Kinzals. So, yeah, that is, it is what it is. And uh, also, Happy New Year to uh, the Thai and the Burmese people, the Water Festival, as well as the Tin Yen. Uh, and then, yeah, Video very long already, half an hour. Okay, I should I should just scroll up. The blah 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 blah. blah. I, sh I should not do so much anymore. Uh, I'm I'm mistake. So there's a few things. Uh, this this is a uh, troops going on operation. This is the if I'm not wrong, this is the I'm not sure which group is this. Uh, so there is some fighting around here. Very very chaotic. I don't want to play. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 maybe I should not show later. I got demonetized. Anyway, I'm not going to go through anymore because it's a bit too long, the video. Anyway, let me know what you think uh, of this uh, segment or this uh, this series. Uh, and I should I do this on a daily basis or you know, every other day? Because this is a very, very good way to cover the major trending news around the world. Uh, because, yeah, I will be seeing them on my feed and then I'll be sharing them and talk about them, giving my comments. So... And it's something that, you know, I cannot do just by Telegram and whatnot because it's, it will be a lot of work to just keep pasting everything I say everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, doing a video is easier. I can talk in details rather than type. Typing is slower. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you guys in the next update.